Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Welcome back. Think Bigger Podcast. This episode is the travel episode. Okay, we are going to talk about traveling. Now, you guys already know how it is. The way that that I believe the typical person sees traveling, what they think of when that word comes to mind. You know, you're thinking of a plane and plane ticket. And um, what comes with that is time and money. And so already in, in the instant that you hear the word, it becomes a task. It becomes something that is involved, right? Or when you hear the word travel, maybe you think of, you know, an exotic destination, an island, something beautiful, a country you've never seen before, um, sights, sounds, museums, food, right? These are the types of things that come to mind when people think of the word travel. And when people say, I want to travel more, it's almost always a, a, a destination that is, you know, far away from you. And I get that, right? I get that. You know, especially in the world of social media, we see so many images, videos and images all day long from people we know, people we don't know, of all these amazing places. I mean, you take something like Instagram where you just have the potential to see in one minute as as you're scrolling or looking on your explore page, for example, to see some of the most gorgeous scenery and photography of people standing on a balcony of a hotel in a some incredible city or they're in a cabin in the mountains or they're hiking or they're sitting um, outside of a restaurant and, and, and people are walking by in, in some place and and these types of beautiful scenes are all in one place so you get bombarded with it right and Herein again lies the danger because, you know, we live in an era with the internet where there is a a streamlined presentation of reality. It is a hyper real and a surreal reality that even though it's based in, it starts to become unrealistic, okay? And, And so in this episode of The Travel the travel episode, we're going to talk about the two different types of ways to look at this, okay? You know, it's all about mindset. The Think Bigger Project, the Think Bigger Podcast is all about changing the way that we think, expanding the way that we think, thinking bigger, and opening uh, ourselves up to changing what is within because that affects and changes everything without, right? On the outside of everything. So it all starts inside of us. And that's why it's about thinking um, bigger and changing the way we think. So when you think of traveling, right? There are two ways to, to look at that. You can look at it literally, which is what we've touched on. Um, car rides, road trips, plane tickets, far destinations, okay? That's, that's literal, right? And then there's philosophical. Um, It's in your mind, which we also touched on. So as much as the two are separate, they're also deeply, deeply connected, right? And I know some of you are are, are starting to to understand where I may be going with this. But um, I think other people, you know, it's going to be a little bit different. And you're going to have to kind of stop and turn it around. You know, that's what these podcast episodes are about. They're about stimulating thought. And whether you speak to myself about these things via the Instagram posts that follow for every specific episode where we use the comment section to communicate about it, whether you talk to uh, these things with your friends, family, but that's what it's about, right? It's about stimulating conversation. So this is this is all about the way that we think you know how you think is how you act how you think is how you conduct business how you think is how you treat another person that's how it works right 
and, and how we treat life, right? At what we see, half empty, half full. I can't do this. I want to do that. I hope to do this or that. You know, those are the words that come out of people instead of I am going to do this or I'm going to do this on this date, right? Setting goals, right? So traveling, a lot of people find traveling to be a time and money, you know, issue, right? And and let's kind of get to that, right? So traveling, a destination, a city, a state, a country, passports, uh, road trips, tanks of gas, blankets, um, Google Maps. We need to get to this spot by this time so we have a place to sleep. There's a lot of different ways to travel, right? But let's talk about literal, right? Literally going somewhere. So what do you guys think is an ideal travel destination? Does the premise or the word vacation come to mind? For those of you that know the IG, please take the time to comment about that. I want to know, when you think of travel or traveling, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And if it's a place, where was the first place that came to your mind? If you want to pause the podcast and go to my Instagram post about this episode, the travel episode, post, comment. I'm interested, but for those of you that look at it as a literal, physical event, right? Time and money. That's what we are all working with, right? And so people have a hard time understanding, I think, without really stopping to look at it, that traveling is not as expensive as you may think, okay? You need to obviously be able to have a financial resource like a job, right? But at the same time, the social media platform that we use that gives us all of the ideas of where we want to go and, and, and we want to take a photo there and I want to eat there and all those types of things. This is the place that you can use the same thing, the internet, but you can find gems and 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 free spots and inexpensive locations and for example right let's take a guy i don't know his name you know i I catch it every once in a while it might be for vice uh for those of you that do watch uh, shows like that it might be for vice but there's this guy in manhattan and he was like i'm going to try to live in new york specifically manhattan i believe it was for one week for zero dollars okay i want to exist in new york and not just survive as in food but have fun go out and drink and go to i don't know what you would call them lounges or pubs bars a little underground type spots so if you guys want to look them up uh, there is probably more than one type of person who did something like that, but this guy did it. Um, and, and yes, it's a vlog style kind of, you know, production, but he, he logs what he found. He shows where he found it online and uh, goes to these places. Tuesday night free shot, um, Tuesday night free slice of pizza when you come into this place. Um, this bar or club or lounge or stand-up comedy corner spot or musical performances and open mics are all free, et cetera, et cetera. And he just looks it up, right, using the internet. And he ends up getting through uh, one week in New York for zero dollars. Now, it's kind of an extreme example because when you watch it, you'll see things like uh, where he's eating, and some of the things he did to be able to eat just to stick to this zero dollars kind of thing. But you don't need to stick to that. It's just an extreme example of what I'm talking about because people spend a lot of time on Instagram, Facebook, 
I don't know, Snapchat, now TikTok. And, and a lot of people don't really admit that they've kind of forgotten exactly how incredible the internet is. I mean, searching information is one of the most oddly overlooked capabilities. I mean, I've been in cars with people who are like, hey, um, look up how to get somewhere. And it's just like, wait, you live in this area. You know where that is. And they're like, yeah, yeah I mean, I kind of know, but just look it up. And then they, And then subsequently, there are people who have even gotten lost going to a place that they pretty much knew where it was. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That's real. And so this kind of all goes back to the danger of social media if you realize that that's what you use. The, the, mankind's most powerful tool is the internet because you have in your pocket a supercomputer that gives you the ability to look up virtually anything. So without going too far into that, we're going to talk about this in regards to traveling, right? The, the idea of experiencing a place and the money that's involved with it, right? You take that extreme example of a guy spending zero dollars. But, you know, what is expensive, really, right? When you talk to people in their lives, right? Nobody says, I wish that I bought more shoes, I wish that I had more clothes. People don't say that. If you talk to elders when they're passing away in their old age, nobody says that. I wish I had more dope jackets. That's not what people say. People say, I wish I I loved more. I wish I traveled more. I wish I experienced more things, right? So let's talk about this literal travel. Right, We've got this example of New York for zero dollars. And, you know, like I just mentioned about shoes, you know, I actually did a vlog a long time ago. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called Sneakers or Seattle. OK, Sneakers or Seattle. I was presenting the, this premise right now about being able to make something happen. Right. And that would be traveling. So I'm in Southern California, and the Pacific Northwest is a very beautiful place to me. Uh, not just because of the, the air and the water and the scenery and the lush greenery that they didn't chop down. There's also people up there that I appreciate. But um, regardless, uh, this is a good example, right? Now, someone would think, oh, flying up there, where am I going to stay, plane ticket, etc. And, and within seconds, it's kind of going to get chalked up to, I need to save up money for that. And it gets put into a different file folder in our minds, right? But take the time to go watch that vlog on my YouTube channel, Sneakers or Seattle. And you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So sneakers, Let's take, for those are, that are into the, the shoes and the sneaker heads, shoe heads, you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. Let's take something very common, like a, a pair of Jordans, right? The average Jordan's 180 to 220. Let's just take that number, right? So let's just go in the middle. Because if you buy the 180 pair, tax, whatever, whatever, if you buy it online, depending on where you get it, you know what I'm saying? $200. So let's just go in between 180 and 220 go 200 if you're buying the 210 220 releases it's even more let's just go 200 dollars. okay for 200 dollars, right and we're not even going to talk about if you're into shoes what you're spending on hats jackets hoodies pants socks watches right you know where y'all know where i'm going so 200 dollars, a plane ticket to seattle right? You buy it early enough, $98, $110. Seriously, that's how much I pay when I go up there. And you're at halfway, you're at $100. Okay. You're at 100 bucks. you get up there. If you do the Airbnb thing, if you do a hotel thing outside of the city, right? 
you're going to spend about $100 for one night. So if you took a red eye, for example, you get there at 6, 7, 8 in the morning, you have an entire day to go about doing what you want to do. You can take public transportation in there. You can rent a car. You can Uber and you know, Lyft and all of these different things. If you don't know anyone, these are all things that you can look up within seconds. Public transportation, they have birds, their version of birds. There's all these different ways that'll cost extremely low amounts of money, right? So you take a red eye, you get there at eight in the morning, you have an entire day, right? And if, if you so choose, you check out in the morning if you can only afford one night and you have another entire day until let's say you took a red eye that next night. So right now, aside from if you choose to eat in a couple of places, a couple of Uber rides, we are talking about under $250 for a trip to Seattle, Washington for effectively two complete days. Now, that's a bit of a tight schedule, obviously, right? Red eye, Right? You sleep on the plane, you get there, you go exploring, you're excited. There's new sights and sounds and food and people and air. Right, You enjoy the whole day, you check in that night, you sleep, you wake up in the morning early, you check out. And you go about the whole thing, new places that you can look up on your phone. A couple of Uber, Lyfts, birds, you can walk around the city, gorgeous place, etc. And you're out. Now, under 250 bucks. We're talking about a pair of shoes that would tax us about 200 plus, right? So now you, what, $50 more? That's a weekend. Let's say the Red Eyes Friday night, you get there Saturday, all Saturday sleep, Saturday night, all Sunday you fly out and you get home and you go to work Monday morning. Does that sound doable? It's absolutely doable, right? Does that sound ideal? Okay, maybe not. You want to stay longer? Oh, then what? Save up for another night? Another $100? So you're at $350? Do you, you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to get you guys to understand that it's only as difficult as you make it. Okay? It's only as difficult as you make it. There are no excuses. You don't need to go with anyone. I know there are a ton of you, right? If you have a spouse and children, okay, those are very obviously real factors okay and that makes things different but there are going to be many of you that that's not the first thing that comes to your mind as an as a factor that complicates things okay and i'm using this as an extreme example okay because the first thing that people do whether it's your homies your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever it is i get it but in life if you always wait for other people or another person for them to make it convenient for them for them to to prioritize it the way that you are choosing to inadvertently it's gonna stifle a lot of your adventures it's gonna stifle a lot of your growth okay you don't need to go with anyone if you are married that's different you can't just up and leave but for those of you that are they're single or just dating right things like that right you can go it's scary, but you can go alone. I mean, look, you're not going to the middle of some random Eastern European country and staying in some hostel in the middle of nowhere on the outskirts of Slovakia, like in the movie Hostel, which for those of you that have seen that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, you're damn right. That's going to freak anyone out if you even allow yourself to, to think about that. If you guys haven't seen the movie Hostel... Yeah, don't watch it. The The premise of it is basically some people go traveling, some younger guys, and they get together, and they end up going off track to a little hostel in a place kind of far away from everyone, and next thing you know, they're getting murdered in factories, and it's a long story, but the point is, is that that's not what you're doing. You're not flying across the globe, which you sure can if you want to by yourself. You're an adult, right? But we're not talking about that, right? We're talking about something simple. In your own state, you can get in your own car and go to places, museums and restaurants and places that you just need to actually decide you're going to do and look it up and go, okay? We're, we're talking about 
<clears throat> major city, major cities, history, and culture, museums, and landmarks. The stuff is fascinating, man. Stuff is fascinating. You can look up anything that you need in a lot of the most major cities. There are train systems and subways. You don't have to do the cab thing because, yes, that can get expensive, right? You can do Airbnb. You can rent just a room if you're okay with that. And it comes out to very, very cost-effective ways of living in a place or staying in a place for just some time, right? There are so many ways to make traveling affordable. You just have to decide to do it, okay? Literally decide literally physically go someplace right that's literal travel okay then there's philosophical right you guys know i'm all about the way that we think i'm all about changing the way that we think opening our eyes and looking at things differently it's all in our minds okay there's a saying that i have that where you go and who you're with are as important and profound as you let them be Okay, think about that. Where you go and who you're with are as important and profound as you make them be. Whether you're across the globe or across the street, who you're with is as important and profound as you make them be. Are you with me? Whether you're across the globe or across the street, it is all a matter of how you make the moment or moments count, okay? We're all chasing memories and moments. Life is comprised of moments. And what do you do with your moments? Do you just let them come to you and you deal with them in that moment? So the moment that just passed, you were reacting to it rather than creating that moment. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you just going through your life, letting life come at you, and you're ducking and bobbing and weaving and reacting to the moments, and you therefore lose that moment because in that moment, it was you reacting to it. Whereas if you change the way that you think, and you create the journey and the moments, you're, you're in control of what those memories are made of. You're not a victim to the circumstances of your life and the, and, and the moments that came at you rather than you coming at them. You chose to go in that direction. So, so traveling, the journey of life, the, the, the mental, philosophical side of things, that's what we're focusing on in this part right here. Right, right now we're talking about that, right? Do you guys, are you guys with me? Does it seem far out? No, it's not. It's right there in your mind, you know? It's right there in your mind. Because, you know, once again, we talk about the phones, this powerful tool, this social media tool, this internet tool, the, the cameras and video functions on these things are amazing, right? And we all kind of just take it for granted. It's all pretty normal. But we've all seen it. You're at a restaurant and... Uh, the people around you are, are taking pictures of their food. Now I get it, man. If you're if you're quick with it, if you're relatively quick with it, it's 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 you know you take a photo of your food and then you you eat it, right? But we all know that there are people who don't realize that they can't toe the line, right? They can't realize that there's no balance so they're spending time rearranging the food and angling it and hey, give me some light and 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 so it starts to become where the food and the person you're with and the moment that you're having is not even the point. The point is to let people know about what you're doing. The point isn't to enjoy the food and enjoy the person that's sitting next to you and across from you. The point of even going was to take a photo for the gram, right? We all know that. How about sights and sounds and, and, and cities and, and walking? People are looking at and then through their phones, right? 
You guys all know what I'm talking about. We're all guilty of it. So I'm not just talking about pointing fingers at other people and looking around. We all have done it. We all do it, right? You can be in your house on the couch or laying in bed and you can look up those images and look at them and they're going to be even better than when you are looking at that place in that geographical location if you are looking at it through your phone predominantly, if the premise is to frame it and take a photo of it, Snapchat it, Instagram it, uh, and video it, you are looking at the object, the historical landmark, the mountain, the flower, the building. You are looking at whatever it is through the same lens, through the same filter, literally as you would have been if you were just sitting at home. You're not enjoying it. You're not. They aren't. Some of you are like, no, nah, man, I don't do that. I'll take a photo and put the phone back in my pocket. If that's what you do, that's an amazing thing. But you all know, we all know that it is becoming more and more of a problem. So do you look at your life and your experiences and your moments and your sights and sounds through a filter, okay? If you go outside of your front door and you walk across the street to visit maybe a neighbor or family, right? And you sit with them and you laugh and you eat and you are relaxed, that, my friends, is a vacation, right? Where you go and who you're with are as important and profound as you make them be, okay? If you go to your backyard, if you're blessed enough to have a home or, or an apartment, whatever, and you go to the back and you sit there, maybe you're drinking a beer, maybe you're having a glass of red wine, maybe you're drinking coffee, maybe you're drinking tea, maybe you're smoking, who knows whatever you're doing, but if you put away your device and you take your mind and you are in control of it and you sit there, maybe it's the breeze, the sunlight, maybe you have music playing, right? You go to your backyard and in that moment, if you are in control of your mind, it is a more profound moment of relaxation and subsequently a vacation than if you saved up money, looked up research places, booked hotels, and, and went to a place, stressed out about it, Instagramming it, letting people know, checking in on Facebook, look at my hotel room, look at this tub, look at this balcony view. Do you guys, do you guys see what I'm saying? Whether you're across the globe or across the street, it is really up to you to make that moment and that place and the person or people you're with as profound and important as you want them to be. Because if you go to an island in Hawaii and you have sun and palm trees and sand and beautiful water and you are looking at it through your phone, you have lost the point of your vacation, of your traveling. It is not about recording it. What about the people who record 4th of July fireworks? Everyone's phone is up. When are you going to watch that again? Like, who is going to watch the fireworks on the 4th of July again? Over and over again. You're not going to do that. Put your phone away, right? I know the sunset's beautiful. And okay, fine. If you find it, prop your phone up and leave it there. But really, if you're thinking about that, you're going to miss the point. Okay, travel is as much, if not all, in your mind as it is going literally someplace. Okay? This is the premise of the Think Bigger project. That's why it's called that. We need to work on the way that we think our perspectives, 
If we're able to look past what's right in front of us, think bigger and expand that, everything changes, okay? Everything changes. Are you guys with me? If you're with me, if you have something to say, pause the podcast, comment. Comment on Instagram, comment on YouTube for those listening on YouTube. Share with me your ideas. Do you understand? Do you disagree? Do you have a a suggestion? Do you have a story example that fits in or contradicts what's been presented so far? Right? If you do, share it. Let's talk about it. Let's have an adult conversation. Right? So this is what we're talking about. You have the, the literal and you have the philosophical viewpoints of traveling. All right? But like we talked about, life is is made of moments and traveling mentally physically is just a way to create beautiful moments right you have sought out those moments and you can therefore make memories Mem- memories are made right but it all once again comes down to how you want to look at it all right whether you look at traveling as a vacation whether you look at it as something like that, literal, or something mental. Vacation is mental. It's not physical. Vacation is letting your mind and your body relax. Now, it's so easy to do that. It's, it's more of a thing to do when you're not where you normally are, when you're not around the people you normally are. That's what the premise of vacation is. It's a change of scenery and surroundings. I get that. I get that. But... This is all about taking control of your life and how you live it, right? So, like we talked about earlier, you know, literal or philosophical, right? People don't really read books. So the idea of giving an example of this older saying that that people had where you can get lost in a good book. Have you guys heard that before? Because you can. We all know you can, right? But since people don't really read books, maybe that's going to not ring so powerfully. But we've all sat down and read a book or even a magazine and you're just engrossed in it. You're, you're reading it. You're looking at the photos if it's a magazine, for example, and you're just in it. And in that few seconds, you're gone from your surroundings. You know what I'm talking about? That, my friends, is, is an example of the power of your mind. Right. Sometimes it's let's take a physical book. You're reading a novel. It's action. It's drama. It's mystery. Right. Whatever. And you're lost. You're just reading it. You can't put it down. Right. Page after page. Your mind is is completely in that moment. My friends, that is what we are talking about. Now, let's use a more modern example. You're driving. You're commuting to work. You're commuting from work. You're taking a road trip, so you choose to listen to something like an audio book where they pick these people with, with these beautiful voices and inflection and they read the book to you using emotion and you get lost in it, right? So 5, 10, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, you're driving and maybe in traffic and you get to where you are and the time just went. You're like, man, the time flew because I was listening to this audio book or a podcast, Right? Many of you say that you listen to this podcast while you're driving. It's a perfect example when you tune in. Right? Yes, of course, we're driving, so you have to pay attention to the road. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Eat. Let's take music. Right? You put on music. Yes, you're remembering to slow down when the car in front of you slows down and accelerate when you have room to. So it's not like we are unable to multitask to a certain degree, right? But we've all gone places and the time just was gone because we were you know, listening to music. You're at the gym, right? Maybe doing cardio. No one likes sitting on a bike or, or running on a treadmill. But if you zone into the music or if you're watching the TV, the monitor, Right, you zone in and the time just disappears. That is a, just a small example of the power of when you tune in to something. Now, when you take that power and you put it into something like traveling, mentally, philosophically, taking a vacation, mentally, philosophically, right? 
Everything can change. You can tune out the world around you. Some people use this same thing for praying when they pray to God or meditating, right? Calming yourself. In that moment when you calm yourself, you are by definition traveling. You are traveling away from where you are. Maybe not physically, maybe not geographically, but you are in that moment traveling away from where you are mentally. And that's the one that matters the most, far more than the four walls that are around you or the name of the city or the state or the country that you're in. It's your mind that you need to work on. It's the way that we think. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Tell me your thoughts, right? Like we talked about earlier, when you speak to older people who are passing away, they lived lives, you know, they're, you know, 70, 80, 90. They're not going to tell you they, they wish they had more designer things. And, and they're not going to tell you that they wish that they had more fashion pieces. That's not what they're going to tell you. Right? They're gonna say they're gonna say they, they wish they loved more, they wish they lived more, they wish they traveled more. That's the truth, right? Life is what you make it. You can take a vacation. It's not that hard. It takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, a little bit of money. And if you wanna go to a farther place and do more things, stay longer, it takes a little bit more money. There are ways to make it happen. Life is about moments and memories. It's not about things. It's not about followers. It's not about subscribers. It's not about designer objects. It's not about that. Okay? We are always talking about how time flies. I mean, we are now coming up quickly on the end of the first month of 2020. The end of the first month of 2020. And we were all just in 2019. I know if any of you guys are writing the dates, if for any reason you have like a pen and you have to write down the date, I know people are still writing 19 instead of 20. This is this mega decade, 2020, new year, new me, and we are about to be done with the first month of it. Just like that. Just like that. We're always talking about how time flies. We say it every year, throughout the year, when the child gets older, when anyone has a birthday, right? Time flies. When someone passes away, time flies. Where did the time go? If you have kids, parents, you already immediately know what I'm talking about. You found out you're having a baby, you know, nine months, have the baby. You have the little tiny one, right? Then they become little chunky fatties, little cute soft babies that make cute noises. Next thing you know, they're learning to walk. Next thing you know, they're in school. Next thing you know... They're teenagers. Time flies. What are you going to do with your time? Who is important to you? What is important to you? It's not so much where. Okay? Make the time. Make the effort to travel. And it all starts in your mind. Time and life, they're made of moments. And are the moments coming at you or are you going at the moments? Are you just reacting to life and your circumstances? Or are you going to be proactive and go out there and make your moments and make your circumstances? Okay? It's a lot to turn around in our head. You know, I've spent years doing it. I've traveled a pretty respectably uh, far amount of places, you know. I've gone to more places in the last five years of my life than many people will ever go in their whole lives. I mean, I know people in their 30s, 40s, they've only been on a plane once or twice. Some of them never have, right? So I know people that have never left their state. Sounds kind of extreme, but I know a lot of you, right? A lot of younger people, it's different. You need know, road trips and uh, car events and things like that, right? But for a lot of people, it's just never a thing that came up. But having been to the South, 
right? The East Coast, um, you know, Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, you know, Boston, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx, Jersey, you know, Philly, all over PA, the South, Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been in and around that area, Atlanta, you know, Orlando, South Beach, Miami, Wynwood, so all over Florida, Pacific Northwest, Seattle, various parts of Washington, suburbs, city, Oregon, Portland, and around surrounding areas, Pacific Northwest, West Coast, you know, San Diego, you know, different parts of Southern California, right? I have yet to do Central California. I do go up to Northern California, the Bay Area, right? You guys, because of my profession, because of my my resume and my time in, in a certain industry, I have been blessed with the ability to, to do these events and host these events in different parts of the country and the world. You know, I've been to Belgium a couple of years in a row, Brussels and Bruges. I've been to Nürburgring, the town of Nürburgring, where the world famous Nürburgring is in Germany. Driving through France, the Euro Tunnel, you know, flying into London, going around all over London and eating all of these ethnic foods and experiencing British culture and having tea. Right? These are all amazing stories. But if I was lost in my, in my phone, they would just be photos. They wouldn't be memories. They wouldn't be powerful. Each place that I've been to, I, I go to museums. I go to landmarks. I read about things. I'll learn the subway system, right? And take public transportation, walk around, right? Luckily, I'm blessed to have one or two people, even if it's just one, it's some introduction to the place. So you're not necessarily going about it alone. But there are other places, man, I totally got scared, man. I went to Brooklyn one time. You know, I, I ended up staying around in an area, sun was going down. And um, I didn't have reception, so I couldn't call an Uber, so I had to just walk. And I'm walking down some street. I don't know where I am. I mean, I have a general idea, and I know how to get to where I need to go to because I have a phone with a map, right? It can be kind of scary, I guess. You know, but I mean, you know, I, I didn't walk 14 blocks into the middle of a borough where I'm going to pretty much just get killed. I mean, it's not that extreme. It's It's what you make it, man. I was in Atlanta. My friend was like, hey... I can't come get you until later. He's like, if you want to take the train, then, you know, just look it up, take this stop. And when you get off, you walk this way a couple blocks and I'm over there. And I just did it. I had never been to Atlanta before. And I did it. It was like six bucks or something for the train. I don't remember, man. But same thing with Manhattan. I was in Uptown. I drove in. That's where I ended up driving in. So I'm in Uptown in Manhattan. It's just like, I want to go to these other places. So I found a place to park the car, looked up the A train and connects to this train. And, and I just got on it. And all the stories you hear about where this part smells like piss. And there's all these people playing music. And then there's crazy people. And then there's commuters, just regular people. All that, man. I was looking around, you know. There was like some super angry, like drugged out dude that was yelling at people because they wouldn't give him money. There's somebody playing a guitar and singing. These are all these amazing kind of memories and moments that I chose to create. Because I have looked around enough and, and seen enough photos and videos where I was like, I want to go there and experience that. You know, when I was just there last time, you know, hosting the Eibach meet, you know, Ryan from Eibach, we're out there and we ended up looking up a museum, the one right next to Central Park. I don't know, is it the Natural History Museum? I don't remember the specific thing. That museum's free. We didn't even know. We were going to just go and pay to get in but they take donations there are people who gave a dollar and there are people who pay 25 dollars to go in there they take whatever you can give that museum is gorgeous and i have all kinds of friends that live in the city out there on the east and they're like man i went there when i was a kid once or I don't, i've never been there and that's a perfect example because anywhere you go you're going to find people who live there and they're just like oh you want to do that that's like a really touristy thing or I guess we could go there. I haven't done it. Let's take Philly, for example. I have friends that are from PA all over that area. They've never gone into the museum 
where the rocky steps are. Everyone calls it the rocky steps, right? You got the Rocky Balboa statue. Statue. Every time you go, there are people in line to take a picture at the Rocky statue. And right next to that are those steps from the movie. People are jogging up them. People are, I mean, there's more tourists than anything. People sitting down, taking photos. When you go to the top of the steps, there's a fountain that's usually on. A lot of times they have art around or hanging off the side of, mu of the museum. But there are so many people, the majority of people, they do the steps, they take their picture. Because in Philly, when you're standing on, that, on the steps of that museum, when you turn around and face out, out you can see straight down and you can see the town center and the town hall because it's built in a line. And so it's a beautiful picture if the weather is right. But the museum, I had been going to Philly for an event for a few years in a row. And one day I was like, I want to go into the museum. Nobody really wanted to go. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to. And I ended up having a homie go in with me. And you guys, there are exhibits and themes and rooms that if you just walk and take even three seconds to look at something, it will take you five or six hours that's not stopping to enjoy every single piece or read about it. If you just don't just walk right past it, if you just stop for three seconds just to look it over, which you should do, there's so much. And it's amazing what these uh, companies and, and people have curated and put together uh, historically. And, and you have to appreciate that. When I went to Atlanta... I went to the the area where Martin Luther King Jr. was, Dr. Martin Luther King, the the uh, the 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 church and the, his museum, and you read things and you and you understand the history, what happened on those streets and how it has affected the, this country that we live in. You know, there's so much, and everywhere you go, there are going to be people who are like, I've never done that. People, we're living our lives. It's busy. We don't always have time, right? But without going far, without spending a ton of money, I guarantee that wherever you live, without having to go all that far, you can go experience something and travel. Travel physically and travel mentally. But whether it be that or some other place, it is what you make it, right? It is what you make it. I'm giving these examples of places to go in these different cities, but you don't have to go to those cities. Or you can pick one. You save up just a little bit each check, just a little bit. You know, plan it six months in advance, right? 50 bucks, this check, 50 bucks, that check. Put it away. All right, two checks, it's a month, it's only 100 bucks, but okay, six months later, you're at 600 bucks. You're at 600 bucks. That's all you need to go and have an amazing week or a long weekend, a Thursday to a Monday someplace. You can do it. If you want to go to a city or a state or a site, if you want to try a restaurant, a world famous this, if you want to get on a plane and go someplace, you can do it, okay? Traveling, my friends, is something that everyone will say at the end of their life that they wish they did more of. There's so much beauty in this world, in the midst of all of the things going on in our world. I mean, look at Puerto Rico. You got people getting hit with earthquakes. Those are not contemporary buildings. You know, people are without the basic, basic needs, right? right? I've been to Puerto Rico, gorgeous place, amazing people suffering because of these disasters. Look at Australia, okay? Australia, next thing you know, people blink their eyes and fires, and next thing you know, they're merging. They have over one billion animals that they say have died. One billion. I mean, that's a number that you can't even really turn around in your head. If you don't count bugs and insects, half a million, 750 million animals. Okay? There's... There's civil strife, there's tension in communities, there's racial tensions. The world's in a place. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. But the point is, is that 
we don't have a guarantee of time. Right? God forbid there's a natural disaster where we live. Right? There's listeners of the Think Bigger podcast all over the world. So wherever you are listening, it doesn't matter if you're down the street or across the globe. Right? These words ring true. Life is what we make it. You have time to travel. You must control your mind the way that you think because that is how you can make the most of even, even the worst of circumstances. Okay, When things go wrong in your house, if you can't control that, if you can't deal with that properly, then you're going to have a hard time dealing with it outside of your home and the comfort of your four walls. If you go on a trip and something goes wrong, you have to be able to maintain composure and deal with it. These are just life lessons. These are life skills. And this travel episode is putting it in the context of that traveling. It starts in your mind before anything else, before you get in a car and drive and do a road trip, before you get on an airplane and travel somewhere, the vacation aspect of it, the enjoyment aspect of it, the learning aspect of that trip is all in your mind. Okay, that's what we're about. We're about thinking bigger. Okay, once again, you guys, I appreciate you deeply for taking the time to listen And I hope that you tuned in and this particular podcast, like the other ones, gave you a disconnect from other things. And you you tuned in and in this moment together, we traveled, right? Think Bigger Project. Think Bigger Podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. There is a post on my Instagram for this particular episode, right? Take the time to comment. Share your beliefs your understandings, your disagreements, your confusions, and let's continue the conversation in the comments there on those social media platforms, okay? I appreciate you. I'm your host, Big Mike. For all of the new listeners, you guys are what this is all about, okay? So thank you so much. I appreciate you deeply. Share this if you believe that another person in your world should hear any of these episodes. Take a few seconds out of your life, share it with them, post it on social media, link it on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Thank you, guys. Think Bigger Project. Think Bigger Podcast. I appreciate you greatly. God bless you. I'll see you on the next one.